Hey, 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 fam. What's good? It's Tuesdays with Tawana. Yeah, today is a tough day. And I want to keep this, for those who are watching, I want to keep this visual up for a moment. For those that will be listening later, um, you'll understand, um, you'll be able to uh, visualize uh, what our opening picture and our opening moment of honor and love and grief and remembrance of uh, my mother. Hey, Tony. Yes, ma'am. Rest well, Miss Rose. Yes. Um, so I, I want to read something that um, my brother posted, and, and I did ask for permission because this is a very uh, emotional day for us. And it reads as follows, uh, 30th anniversary. On this day, March 28th, 1993, at three o'clock p.m., my mother, Rose Lee Davis, passed away. Her death was a traumatic experience to witness. It was the most devastating loss in my life to see my mother take her last breath. The memory of that moment will forever follow me wherever I go. My mother was an inspiring soul, always there for all who came to her with their troubles. Her home was open to everyone and her hospitality made them feel important. She was the most loving, humble, compassionate, understanding, family-oriented woman, and one of the most beautiful souls one could ever meet. We did not have much, but we always felt like we had everything. The legacy she left behind is invaluable. Mom, you were precious, a gift for God, from God. So much beauty, grace, love, and patience you possessed. You touched my heart in so many ways, even on dark days. The memory of your strength and smile is what got me through. On the 30th anniversary of your death, I can say yes, time heals wounds, but the pain can never truly be erased. I love you, mom. And that was written by my brother, Larry, who is on right now. <sighs> hey, Julie. Yes, such a loss. Um, and I can't believe it's been 30 years. Um, my mother succumbed to challenges with multiple myeloma, which is cancer of the bone marrow. And on this day, as we are coming to a close uh, with Women's Herstory Month, how appropriate to tell her story for a few moments, um, adding to the powerful words of the loving words, the transparent and, and heartfelt words from my brother, Larry. Um, yeah. Rosalie Davis, words can't even describe, I mean, my brother put it put it together 
perfectly to describe the woman you were and are in our lives. And we would not be here today as a family, as a loving family, as a family that is doing great things, that love community, that loves one another, that continues to support one another unconditionally, um, doing our best not to judge and to keep a smile on our face and to support those who are in need. Those are things that we learned from, from our mother. Um, I love you too, brother. I love you too. Hey, Teresa, my other sister. Yes, our mother was a beautiful angel and Tanisha um, says, I remember that day like it was yesterday. And I, I open up Tuesdays with Tawana uh, with this, this honor, this moment to honor our mother because she was a mother to, to so many. And she really exemplified what it was to to love and to care and to forgive and have patience she opened her home for 15 years as as a foster parent um she protected us um <laughs> she protected us from things that who knew um what was coming ahead or what was out there in the world growing up in Harlem in Wagner projects and 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 we all uh there's no shame in where we grew up like my brother said we we struggled like any other impoverished family um in the projects and at the same time we had everything um because she was able to look beyond the limitations of her life and to afford us an opportunity to live life and to live life more abundantly. Um, she gave us an opportunity and would always talk to us and whisper in our ears that we, we were beautiful and we were amazing. And even when we did mess up and do crazy things and make crazy decisions, she still loved us um, and she still nurtured us and still had patience for and with us. Um, so it's it's been 30 years. Um I'm I'm 53, so I was 23 years old when when my mother died. Um still learning what it was to be an adult. I already had a daughter. Um I had a daughter at a very very young age and and yes, Tony, she whispered to all of us. Anyone who was in earshot, um if something was in her her spirit she she would tell you and she would just tell you in the most powerful way and it, it never seemed to be degrading or demeaning um even when i acted a fool and was <laughs> a mess at times i always felt the love from our mother so you know 30 years she helped me to raise my daughter as a teen mom she never um turned her back she said you know what we're going to do this and you are going to finish school and you are going to continue um to live life and to build a life for you and your daughter and i say this all the time that my daughter saved my life she helped me to make better decisions. And it was because of my mother that posited all of that information, posited the love and the support and the encouragement and the faith that she had in me and in us. Um, and she cared for my daughter while I finished high school early. I went to St. John's University. And so she was the caregiver and I was out there working and going to school. And my brother was in the, the military. Um, and we would be talking to my brother on the phone, hearing bombs in the background, and we didn't know if my brother was going to make it home safely. And, and my mom just had this faith. She wasn't, you know, 
a, a religious person, and if you will, like she sent us to church. Now, be, please know, um, all the children in the house was up and dressed, and she sent us to church. She ain't go, but she sent us to church, and but she lived a life of faith. Um, she lived a life of love for all, unconditional positive regard that we often that we often talk about. Um, hey, Miss Odessa, it's so good to to see you. Uh, and and look, Tanisha said she was Donald NICU nurse. She loved on him before my mother could. Isn't that amazing? Yes, my mother was a nurse. Even her, you know, profession was was caring. Um, hey, Jan, good to see you. Um, yes, and she wore Tanisha. I need you to help me document all of this because your memory is amazing. She did wear a yellow ribbon until my brother came home safely from the military. He was a Marine. Um, he's still a Marine. And he's retired, but once a Marine, always a Marine. Um, but she wore that yellow ribbon um, with the hope that um, my brother would come home safely. And, and, and he did. Thank you, God. He, he did. Um, yeah, Tanisha said, kids, kids are sponges. That's how you know that they're always watching. So on today, uh, we speak Rose Lee Davis's name. We speak life into her legacy. We hold her near and dear in our hearts. It's it's a rough day. It's it's a rough day and and we're feeling all the feels. Um and everything was in divine order when 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 she took her last breath. She wasn't alone. My my brother was there of course with the team of doctors. Um I had just left the hospital to go home. Uh take care of the kids, do some laundry and I got the call from from my brother um, and and the whole building, 350, shout out to 350 in Wagner Projects, the whole building um, heard our wails and heard our cry and, and came to us. Um, that's what community is about, right? This is why we do the things that we do um, on this podcast is by, you know, building community one episode at a time. You know, Tanisha said, we're standing on the shoulders of excellence and grace personified. That, that was my mom, that is my mom, because as believers, um, she is an ancestor because she left a legacy of, of love and a beautiful smile that was was birthed out of her soul and her heart. It wasn't just a superficial smile. She had a smile that was so deep, that was contagious, that made other people smile when they came into her presence. So today, um, I had to take a moment to honor um, our mother, Rose Lee Davis to honor her and to speak her name and to insert her into this narrative to um, remember her to you know cry tears of joy and grief because she is truly missed she she is the firm foundation upon which we build and and there's Donald. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to come on today. And I said, you know, if I talk about authentic authenticity and showing up unapologetically and feeling all the feels, then I am going to come on today. And I am going to honor the woman that 
um, not only gave birth to me, but gave me life and, and did the same for my brother Larry and my sister Marie and adopted and adopted my younger brother and sister and my sister Tina, as you all know, is, um, is, is deceased and her one year anniversary of her death is coming up the end of April. Um, but she, my mother was just a, a loving, caring woman and oh, don't get it twisted. Don't mess with any of her kids. <laughs> don't let that smile fool you. Um, <laughs> oh, Tony, thank you. You have her smile so they, they can see it. So thank you so much. So when Donald came on, I, I had to laugh because when we were at the house, in 350 um you know everyone was leaving i don't know it was after the funeral i think and and uh the eastern stars they fixed all the food i mean we didn't have to do anything i just showed up and you know anyway it, we we had everything we needed we we didn't have to do anything our community came through for us and so we were in the house and I think it was like me, Donald, Tara, um, uh, I can't remember who else was there, but there was this woman that was there who said she was a relative. <laughs> and we didn't know who she was. And we were just joking like, oh my God, we're going to die. She is going to like kill us all. Who is this woman? Like we did, we just had no idea who she was, but thanks be to God, we are still here. And to this day, I don't know who she was. Um, it was quite hilarious. I mean, everyone was scared to ask her like, who is she? What is her name? How do you know my mom? Um, she was an older woman, um, <laughs> Miss Mabel. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, th there's joy that comes with pain and, and grief. Um, I really wish uh, my, Dr. Jamie was on today um, because she can definitely help us through uh, this moment. Yes, Donald, and she wouldn't leave. Like we kept, you know how you just like kind of throw these little hints like, okay, well we're, you know, closing up, wrapping up, finishing up, you know, it, whatever. And she just went, she just kept walking back and forth through the house. So anyway, much love to my village that's on, um, to my brother for, I, I, I couldn't have said it better. I am going to copy it and paste it on my page. It was just, it just truly embodied who Rose Lee Davis was and is. And we will continue to honor her by speaking her name and remembering her and talking about her and remembering the good times and remembering the not so good times when we got in trouble as children um, and remembering all of the love and support. So what a great way to, to open up uh, Tuesdays with Tawana, with your host and your curator, Dr. Tad, for those who are joining for the first time, just, you know, make your, your thoughts, your comments known in the chat, and I will insert that into this narrative. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for your, your presence, for being with me during this very, uh, tough day. Um, tough day you know uh my my daughter's about an hour away from me so i'll talk to her when she gets off from work to make sure she's okay and and eric y'all know is in in dubai and i just flew 
12 hours there, 14 hours back to go see him. As you can see on my shirt, um, this says Dubai. Um, we found this Adidas store um, and they had these Adidas shirts with Dubai on it. I didn't want, you know, a simple t-shirt that just said Dubai. So, ta-da! I bought a little bit of Dubai back with me. Um, and I know my mom is just proud of, of all of us. From Marie, Larry, all of my nieces and nephews, my cousins, my Aunt Lorraine, um, who is the last sibling, um, living sibling. Um, so we give her honor and, and send her love and light. Um, I can only imagine what, what she is going through on this day, losing her sister, um, and then previously losing her other sister and her brother, of course, my aunts and uncles. So it, it's a tough time. And, and there are moments where in this space, it is important that we talk about the tough times because when we talk about the tough times, the hope is that we will ga galvanize or gather or come together as family and community and to love and to support one another and to remember the, the great times and the good times that, that we have had as, as a family and as an extended family. And we can release, we, we can cry, we'll have a shoulder to cry on or a virtual shoulder to cry on. We can, you know, share what, what are the tears about? What do we truly miss? about our loved ones that have gone on and how we can honor our relationship with our loved ones in the ancestral realm because they are still speaking, they are still loving, they are still covering, they are still guiding, they are still protecting us. And we can hold on to that in ways that we could not have experienced in this life, in the physical. So we can sit still for a moment and just hear the, the voice of, of my mother or others that have gone on and feel her presence and think about those words or sayings or, or words of encouragement or, you know, her showing up at the school and never miss the performance, never miss a uh, report card to parent-teacher conference, never, never missed anything. She was on the PTA when I attended PS 96 in Harlem, she was there every day. And, um, you know, just remembering all of those things as we go through grief, because grief is not only just this one piece of sadness or, you know, can't get through the sadness to the joy. Um, grief is a culmination of feelings of deep love for someone that you miss or something that you miss um you know being a breast cancer survivor and having a bilateral mastectomy and losing a body part i had to grieve that when i lost my hair i had to grieve that and all those those things seem to some to be superficial it, it's a part of my body and a part of my life just like my mom was and is a part of our lives on this day, the 30th anniversary of her death. And we can carry with us as survivors and thrivers, um, carry her resilience with us and her, her peace and her love. And she, you know, was in a, a lot of pain and kept you know, pushing forward and moving forward and being there for us and keeping a smile on on her beautiful, beautiful face. Um, yeah, so we love you, Rose Lee Davis. We love you. We love you. Uh, Eric always plays, plays this, not always, but plays this song often by Kanye West and not the person, but the song. Um, <laughs> um, hey Mama. Um, it, it's such a, 
you know, Kanye lost his mom, and I think he made the song before he lost his mom, I think. Um, so listen to the song. Hey mama, it's very special. It brings tears to my eyes every time. You know, it's hey mama, I want to sing so loud for you because I'm so proud of you. Let me tell you what I'm about to do. You know I love you so. I wrote this song just so you know. Um, yeah, so that's how I feel about my mama on today. And and as we close uh, Women's History Month, Women's History Month, um, I want to talk about um, womanism for a moment. And it's just so appropriate as we talked about my mom and her unconditional love and you know how she unapologetically showed up in this world not only for herself but for others um this is what womanism is about and we i i let me speak for me i didn't have this language at 23. i didn't have the language of womanist prowess womanist theology womanist um, afrofuturism womanist ethics womanism period which was um, created by the Honorable Alice Walker. And womanism is truly about this eclectic, um, broad view of what it is to be a woman, not this uh, view that is, 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 is linear and kept in a box. It is very full. It's about a woman who loves herself um, or loves themselves unconditionally and who is able to dance and move their body and to love others, sometimes loving other women sexually or otherwise or loving um, even men uh, sexually or otherwise and wanting to lift as we climb. So the more that we share and the more we show up unapologetically as a womanness, we are bringing someone with us. We are centering ourselves and centering black experiences and not as an elitist um, stance or an elitist title, but it is a, 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 a way of being and the fullness thereof so that we bring other people and invite other people into this liberating space. We and, and many people can be a womanist. If you center black women and black experiences in a way that Alice Walker defines it, in a way that is full, that is honorable, that is respectful, that um that is uh communal you you too can be a womanist whether you identify as a man as if you identify as non-binary as you if you identify as a white person according to alice walker you can be you too can be a womanist when you center us when you love us when you honor us when we um when we um oh okay okay i see it larry i will mention that in a moment thank you brother when we talk about womanism um we are centering ourselves because we have been dehumanized and decentered for so long pushed to the side told that we can't do this um, and we shouldn't do that. We had to fight for every right that we have. And now we're getting having our rights taken away. But womanism brings us into a space where um, we are not, we honor and we show up for ourselves and our black beloveds. And we bring people along with us to build community. I want to share something quickly about Dubai. When I was in Dubai with, with Eric, we went to Abu Dhabi um, and we went to this huge mosque. So we wore um, a tire that was very um, cultural for me and um, had my head covered and um, we, we were walking um, at, or, or sitting and, and sipping on uh, tea from, from Morocco, people would stop 
like people would walk past us and stop and like turn around and look at us in awe and admiration. People would stop us to take pictures with us. Um, we were sitting and having tea and a woman was taking pictures of us. And when I turned around, she was like shocked and saw that she, you know, I saw her taking pictures and she was like, may, may, I'm sorry. I should have asked, may I take a picture? And we were like, okay, sure. And I was like, Eric, this is so weird for me. Like all of this, like attention and awe and admiration. And that's because we, as, as black people, um, were were seen as divine. We were seen as as beautiful from the inside out. Like this light just just shone um, throughout, and it really attracted people to us. And I felt safe and at peace when I was in Dubai or Abu Dhabi. I felt this sense of peace in the atmosphere. Um, and I don't feel that here in, in the United States. Um, I feel like when I'm driving and I see a police car, I get nervous. Like, are they gonna pull me over for nothing? Or, you know, our beloveds, we just had another shooting um, where children were killed and uh, six people were killed. Three were children and three were adults. And we're still dealing with how Pete, the NRA and, and, you know, the lack of gun control, they are making money off of the deaths of our children at East High School uh, in Denver, Colorado, the shooting there and, and how we are, are, are creating space for, for healing. And it's so challenging to create that space when there are so many people that are focusing on dehumanizing us and putting money and profits over people. So when we when I talk about womanism, womanism is antithetical to any and everything that is degrading or dehumanizing people in general. Womanism is about unconditional positive regard. Womanism is about being black and being proud and owning who we are. Womanism sets the example for others to be proud of their culture and to go against the systemic ills and, and societal ills that often kill us mind, body, or spirit. Being a womanist, being a womanist is being real. Being a womanist is showing up not only for yourself and loving yourself. Um, I have an opportunity. I, I received a, a scholarship to attend um, this one year uh, BIPOC uh, a space for, for BIPOC leaders um, called Unbox to Lead, and it's for a year. And they focus on taking care of ourselves as leaders so that we might take care of others. And that's a, a womanist stance, a womanist prowess, where we take care of ourselves, we take care of our children, biological or otherwise. Those children at East High School, those young people, those are my children because I am, because they are. Um, and so womanism brings this collective narrative together so that we can build um, and, and tear down when need to, um, when we need to, and also build um, at the same time, not using the master's tools to um, destroy the master's house, but using our own tools and our own divinity and our own prowess and our own intellect and our own communal stance and communal being and our own uh, historic um, uh, knowledge. Because we've been doing this before we were taken from our land and brought here to these disunited states. We knew all of this. We knew how to build and how to be communal and how to be spiritual. We didn't learn about Jesus and, and others um, here in the states. We, we, had our, we knew of our spiritual prowess then. So now taking that and build, bringing that here as a womanist, who will then lead so that we bring other people with us, not leading so that I can self-aggrandize my leadership and think more highly of myself than I, than I am, but to bring me along, bring others along with me 
with my um, divine successes, with my divine intellect, with my divine being, with my energy, with my light, with my love, with my unconditional positive regard, bringing you along with me, you bringing me along with you in areas where I need leadership and teaching and community. As I say, often say, there is he healing happens in community. I am still here today because of community, because of the prayers, because of the love, because of the light, because of the support, because of the sharing of the stories, because of I didn't know what I didn't know. So other people shared their experiences and I learned how to advocate for myself and to ask the hard questions and to bring people along with me to doctor's appointments and build community. When I used to show up to my plastic surgeon, if I didn't show up with the whole crew, I think one time I went by myself and my plastic surgeon was like, um, Tawana, what's going on? Where's your people? <laughs> So when you see community, there's strength in numbers, and then you shift the narrative of what's happening in our world. So womanism is not about, you know, this label. It is about um, showing up unapologetically for yourself and one another so that we can live and not die at the hands of systemic ills. So with that, um, as we, this is the last episode for Women's Herstory Month, and I am so grateful that it fell on this day to honor my mother, to honor all of the womanists out there, and the womanists that are on this line that may not even realize that they're womanists, but their whole, you know, the way they advocate for Black women and Black beloved um, womanists like. Uh, the late Dolores S. Williams, who uh, was one of the co-creators of, of womanist theology and the late Reverend Dr. Katie Geneva Cannon and the wonderful Mitzi J. Smith, who is still alive and still doing her womanist work. We have Reverend Dr. Melva Sampson. We have Dr. Uh, Natasha Robinson Esquire. We have Jamie... Um, we have, uh, her, my last name just escaped me, chemo brain. We have, you know, Carolyn Habersham. We have Reverend Dr. Carolyn McCrary. We, we, we have, uh, just so, so many women. We have, uh, oh gosh, I have so many books here, you know, of, of womanists, um, and my mind just, can't remember them all right now, but there's so many womanists out there. And now that I have posited this, 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 this way of being into your world, you're going to start seeing and start hearing more about womanists. Shaniqua Walker Barnes. Um, we, we can talk about, um, other, other leading, uh, womanists who were founders and, and who paved the way for us, or even those who, before womanist was even developed by Alice Walker, their actions showed that they were womanists, like Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman and Audre Lorde, and all of those who had a womanist stance and prowess, not only for themselves, but to free others. So with that, um, my brother has a request. Hey, Pammy, so good to see you. Yeah, always on edge and alert in the U.S. It's, it's a sad situation. My brother has a request. Please mention to your listeners to take a moment of silence at 3 o'clock when mommy took her last breath. So in about 20, 18 minutes, if you would be so kind at three o'clock in whatever time zone you are in, if you would just take a moment of silence and speak Rose Lee Davis's name, the moment that she took her last breath as she transitioned from this life to the next, as she transitioned from a sage, an elder, a griot to an ancestor, we ask that you honor her, honor her life, of the 57, 53, 57 years on this earth. I was 23, she had me at, so 58 
years on this earth. She she died at a young age, too soon, in in my opinion. Um, and let's remember, let's remember Rosalie Davis and let us smile at three o'clock, speak her name, take a deep breath and just smile. Smile for my mama. Smile for the legacy that she has left. Behind. Yes, she died at 57 because she would be 58 in November. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Still a young age, right? Steve, even worse, a year younger, 57. Um, so thank y'all for for holding space because I feel it. A holding space for me during this moment for holding space during this time of grief and celebration for remembering loved ones that have gone before us that have taught us and continue to teach us as ancestors to encourage us to build community. And in this space, building community one episode at a time where we love unconditionally, we support one another, we see each other, we humanize each other. Yeah, that's what we do with Tuesdays with Tawana. This is Dr. Tad, your host and your curator. I thank you so much for loving me, for holding space. I love you dearly. I see you. I honor you. And I am so grateful. And those who will listen later, um, if you listen to this on another day, still take a moment to breathe. Remember my mom, Rosalie da Lee Davis. Remember your, your people that you, your loved ones that have gone on to the next life and take a deep breath and smile. I love you so much, Donald. I can't even, words just cannot express. You are my ride or die in my day one. And your little sister, you taught her well because then she became my ride or die in my day one as my little sister. So I'm grateful. I love y'all. I, 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 I don't wanna leave because I feel this loving energy and I love it. Um, but we got to go because I got to get back to work. But I love you dearly. Um, be well. Take a deep breath. Love on yourself. Continue to build, build community. <sighs> Continue to love on black women. Let us not let uh, Brother Malcolm X's words um, reign true that we are the most disrespected and unprotected. Um, yeah, we can be the change that we want to see. We are powerful, we're amazing, we're divine. We're all of that and we can make a change. Let us protect our children because this country is not protecting our children. They're protecting their pockets. Let us continue to fight the good fight. Ashe, Ashe, Asheo, later. <laughs>